Most people are using CRISPR for editing genomes. And actually, so we using the CRISPR to label to labeling DNA and tracking the movement of DNA in live cells. To able to label DNA, uh, we need to make the Cas9 mutations, make it in nucleus inactive, and only can binding DNA but not cut the DNA. We have had in the past three different colors that we can use to label the RNA component of this complex. It's called DCAS9, which is a protein, and a accessory RNA called a guide RNA that ferries this complex to the specific DNA sequence, which is recognized by the RNA component. Each of the three primary colors can be put onto the guide RNA one at a time. What Han Wei and Li Chun came up with was the idea of adding two primary colors to any given guide RNA. Computers can use spectral filters in the microscope to read out combinations of colors and display them as a color that you request. For example, red and green can be yellow. Using the three primary colors and this approach called computational coloring, we can generate an additional three colors. And by combining all of the six colors, we can get a seventh fluorescent image, which is white. This crispr rainbow technology allows us to look at the dynamic of the chromosome loci um, along the time that is additional dimension. Um, so we can visualize this chromosome um, loci at different time point and we can monitor it over time and create a trajectory and the trajectory will tell you how far and how fast they move. So with these different colors we can uh, actually looking at this um, area of where the disease is and then looking at different chromosome interactions and their distance to understand how um, the structures change affect the transcription of gene being expressed. Most methods for studying the three-dimensional position of loci requires you to kill the cell in the process. Uh, here we can look at cells while they are alive, which allows us to follow these loci in real time and see how they move. Uh, and that is something that is incredibly important for us to understand. Uh, because typically when we look at the structure of a genome, we have this snapshot and we wish we could see what it would look like five minutes later when a cell is responding to something. This system allows one to follow this over real time. I think it's a really important new technology.